on three. And uh, you laugh, I don't. And uh, verse 22. And uh, okay, I'm going to start reading. I want to talk today about he must increase, but I'm, or he must uh, increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. And I'm going to be in John chapter 3. And uh, I'm going to start at verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there uh, he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in uh, Anon near to Salem, uh, because there was much water there. And uh, when they came, they were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question. Um, uh, th there are, uh, let me go back here. If for John was not yet to cast into prison, then there arose a question between uh, some of John's disciples and the Jews about uh, purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, we know, uh, uh, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent uh, before him. He that, um, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because the bridegroom's voice. Uh, this my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we love the Word of God. We thank you for the chance to uh, look into it. It's a, amazing what's in here, Lord. But some of these things in here are not in our nature and aren't easy for us and aren't what we like. And I pray. Lord, you would uh, speak in a mighty way, Father, and that your spirit would uh, just uh, do great works, Lord, in, in this service today, in this auditorium. Uh, Lord, we pray that your spirit would just be evident and powerful and that we would do what we need to do, Father, and, and become humble and become uh, uh, decreased while you increase. May we exalt you. Speak to hearts. Give us your word and uh, your power. May the spirit of God control what's done now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, John was uh, baptizing, and uh, that's what he's known as, John the Baptist. And he baptized people all the time, and and uh, and that's part of what he did. He baptized so much, he was called Baptist, and uh, uh, someone who baptizes people all the time. And and uh, and uh, and he came just preaching in the wilderness. Suddenly he appeared, and here was this wild guy that was uh, dressed in in primitive clothing and and preaching just hard messages, just rough message in the middle of the wilderness and uh he didn't he didn't go in the city for the most part he's in the wilderness but strangely enough there's something about him that drew people and people came into the wilderness to go here and preach <clears throat> the synagogues might be empty the buildings but this uh the wilderness is full and uh, he would preach that there's one coming after me who i'm not worthy to uh even uh unlatch his sandal and uh, he is coming, and you got to prepare for him, repent, and get your hearts right, and stop your wickedness. And, and John is preaching and baptizing him. Soon, uh, that uh, person he's preaching about named Jesus came, and, and uh, he saw him. And John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. He's the one who takes away the sins of the world. And, and he is the one who I've been preaching about. And uh, he comes into the water, and John says, Hey, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus says, no, no, I need to be an example. And this is part of the, the deal. And so baptize me. And after he's baptized, uh, the, the spirit like a dove descends upon him and a voice shouts from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And you see the whole Trinity there, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, all three at the same place. And uh, it's an amazing moment. And and uh, John the Baptist is, is being used by God. Well, their ministries continue along and, uh, and uh, John's ministry is at a peak where everyone's talking about him. I mean, from, from kings are talking about him and crowds and multitudes and Jesus' ministry begins. And, uh, and, and as they're going along, uh, Jesus is preaching not too far from John. And they're in different areas doing different things normally and sometimes very far apart. But suddenly uh, Jesus is not all that far away in the same region at least. And John's baptizing, but there's not many converts anymore. And, uh, and not a lot of people are being baptized, and the crowds aren't so big. And, and some of John's disciples came to him and said, Hey, uh, John, we just need to tell you this. The one you preached about, uh, he's, he's, he's preaching now, and he's baptizing, and 
everybody's coming to him and he, he's baptized more than us and and we're kind of uh well, we don't have very big crowds anymore and you're not baptizing it very many and he's kind of taking your business and uh and he's 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 baptizing a whole bunch now and and uh and john's response is uh not normally what uh our responses are you know jesus verse 26 it says and they came to john and said to him rabbi he that was with uh thee beyond jordan uh to whom thou uh, bearest witness behold the same baptizes and all men come to him john says hey look when a man gets married and and, and you're the the best man at the wedding and you hear the voice of the bride speaking to his bride and saying i do and giving his vows you're not sad because you're not talking you're rejoicing because you hear your your, your best friend getting married and he's going to be happy and it's about him that day and you're happy for him and he said that's that's my position he says your your people are hearing jesus now i was just a forerunner i was preparing the way and i was preparing people for him all my preaching was to make them receive him and be ready for him and 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 so uh he's he's taken over and then he says these amazing words um that he says in verse 30 he must increase but i must decrease and he says something must happen he must increase i must decrease and those are amazing words amazing words because we humans don't like to decrease uh Jealousy and coveting are amazing things, uh, and and uh, we're we're strange, and we all we, we know that it's an amazing thing. Uh, you would think that in the human situation, I would see someone doing well. Hey, look, my neighbor got a new car. I'm so glad he has a nicer car than me now. Do you think that would be what we'd like? We'd like other people to have more. But that's not always the way we are, is it? You're in high school, and the girl you like, somebody else gets her, and you say, you know, I'm glad that he got her. He's going to be very happy. <laughs> but we're not like that very much. Our nature is, hey, I want to be at the top. How come they got a raise, and I didn't? How come they got the promotion? Not, hey, I'm happy he got promotion. He's got a bigger family than me. You know, I'm glad he got the promotion. He's a nice guy. We like to increase. We like, uh, we like, we like to be the top, and that's a natural state of humanity. Why? Because we are fallen creatures, and we have this nature in us that isn't always the best. Now, some now sometimes I'm not saying we're all evil creatures. I want my neighbor's house to burn down. We're not necessarily like that. Some neighbors, but not always. And uh, but but we're not we're not necessarily like that. But 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 we, but we don't. We don't mind somebody else increasing as long as we increase at a faster rate. He must increase, but I must decrease. My ministry is going to go down now. John's going to end up in jail, not preaching, with doubts. He's going to end up in his head cut off. Where he was massive crowds, everyone coming and listening, raving about him, talking about him, uh, leaders, governors, everybody's talking about him, and now he's in a jail, sitting alone. And Jesus is having unbelievable things happen and 5,000 more, 15,000 massive crowds following him in miracles and John's sitting in a rotting prison underneath a castle. But he must increase and I must de decrease. What an amazing answer. I'm just here to prepare the way for him. He's coming in now and now he's, he's going to increase because why? Because he's got to be lifted up so all men will come unto him. And so my job's done, guys. We're, I, so you know, you... I know you're following me and you're loyal to me and God's called you to be with me, but, but uh, our glory days are past and that's good. Because he must increase and I must decrease. An amazing answer. But that is against our natures to decrease. It's against our natures 
to not be thought of highly or praised or liked or be everybody going rah rah our nature is I want everybody to notice me and I want everybody to like me and I want everybody to think highly of me and I want everybody to I like people to talk about me I like people to 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 to, to praise me it's just our, it's just our natures and I know some some more than others and some less than others but but we want to be people to say hey what a great person boy you're you're amazing you did a great job on that we kind of like ourselves to be lifted up it's in our nature and and I'm not criticizing that I'm just telling you uh, that's the way we are wired. But John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. And later on, Jesus says, it's the greatest man. No, there's never been a greater man than this man, ever. David, Moses, there's never been greater than John the Baptist. Because the man lost himself for the cause of Christ and just cared about, uh, about him increasing. I'm going to teach a message today, and this is not exactly, this is not going to match up very well with prosperity gospel preaching, because I'm going to talk about how to decrease. How to decrease. I'm not going to stand up here and say, I'm going to tell you how God's going to make you rich and wealthy and happy and everybody love you. I'm going to teach you how to decrease and, uh, and how to be able to do that when you need to do that and, uh, and, and, uh, and how to get yourself so you aren't trying to puff yourself up because we in nature will even take God's glory. Look how good I did. Look at how good I am. And we begin taking even the glory from God, let alone increasing or decreasing around men, but where we begin to even want credit for what God did and everybody to really rave about us and, and, and us to really be lifted up. And it's very much our nature is to want to be lifted up, but I'm going to talk to you how to get, push yourself down. And how to make yourself decrease. How do we decrease? Number one, we must keep in mind where it all comes from. Verse 27, John answered and said, A man can uh, receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Why was it so easy for John to say he must increase, but I must decrease? Really simply, John, remember that, you know that ministry I had, guys? Hey, remember when everybody was coming and the, and the rave? and the, Hey, look, guys, God gave me that ministry. I was... A fulfillment of prophecy. I got this because God said I would come. And, and you read the end of the Old Testament, the last words that God wrote in the Old Testament were about me. And you know what? I have been given this job. And, and when all the people came, that was because God's power was upon me. That's because God was speaking through me. That's because God prepared the time and the place and called you guys to come to me, you, my disciples. And why in the world they come in the wilderness? Why? Because God sent them in the wilderness. And God uh, put a, a desire in the heart. And God drew people to him. And the Lord did this work. And I was able to speak because God gave me that. And God put me in a certain family. And, and, and it was a miraculous. And, a, and an angel came and gave a messenger to my parents about me and my name was picked by an angel he said look every you say my ministry is decreasing my ministry is only there because of God God is choosing it for it to go down now but I, I would never have had a ministry if it were not for God and when you realize that every good thing you have is from God it's much easier for you to be okay with decreasing with being humbled with nobody noticing when you do good. When nobody admiring you. Because everything they would have admired you about only came from God. It was a gift, and God gave it to you. A man can receive nothing except to be given from him from heaven. James 1, 17, every good and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Everything comes from God. I'm going to read again 1 Corinthians and chapter 4 and verse 7. You don't have to turn to all these. I'm just saying God says, hey, look, every good thing you get comes from heaven. Understand that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, who uh, for whom maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? He says, who makes you differ from another person? What dost thou have thou did, didn't receive? What do you have that you didn't receive? I have, I have shown this to many people with pride and with, uh, with, with things. So they say, well, God didn't give me my, my education. I went out and I earned that education. 
You know what? If your IQ is 70, you couldn't have got that education. You did not pick your IQ. You had parents who taught you character and, and said you need to go to college and, and, you, and helped you get good grades. Look, uh, if you would have grown in a bad home and you would have had parents who were meth addicts, you probably wouldn't have gotten those good grades. Yes, you took advantage of the opportunities you had, but those opportunities were given by God. And the person with Down syndrome didn't do anything wrong. And the person who grew up in a bad home and, and didn't have the discipline you have didn't do anything wrong. You were given a gift, and you used your gift properly. And that's a good thing. That's admirable. You worked hard. But what do you have that wasn't given to you? I've seen incredible uh, people who are incredibly diligent and on the ball, but they're born in the wrong country. And because of that, they're poor. And they work hard. And they get up and they kick a gigantic hole. And they get up at 5 in the morning and go work in a, in a field with a bunch of mosquitoes uh, in, in a rice field where there's a bunch of mosquitoes who have malaria. And this man, he's ambitious. He's an ambitious man in that country. And he went out and he saved his money. He bought the field next to him. Now he has two fields. He's a good businessman in this country. But he wasn't born in America. He'd be a millionaire in America. But the millionaire in America... So it gets haughty and says, oh, man, look what I did. Look, you were born in the richest country in the history of the world with all kinds of opportunities and all kinds of freedoms. If you had your mind, you're in North Korea, you'd be in poverty. Understand, you're, you're sitting there saying, no, I did this. You breathe in God's oxygen to say that. You do not earn your oxygen. You're not choosing to make your heart beat. You, oh, I'm big and strong and I was able to do this. But you know what? You were born a certain DNA from a certain family. You didn't choose your parents. Yes, you had the potential to be big and strong. Like some people don't, but that does not mean. But you know what? There's other people who could do all the work out in the world. They'll never be big and strong. They'll have bad health. And you were given that gift. Don't get haughty about it. A lot of it's genetic. It just is. And, and look... <laughs> I, I can go out and I can, I can be in the middle of the jungles and I can go out and eat all kinds of things and do this stuff and travel the world. But understand, I was, I have good DNA and I have a good back. And, and, and I grew up as a dirty kid with no parents around. And so I ate with dirty hands and, and played in dirt and, 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 and messed around and, and got all kinds of, and, I, and you know what? I wasn't a hand sanitizer kid. So I got a good immune system because I was a kid back when we played in the dirt and then grabbed our food afterward. And you know what? I didn't choose. I didn't choose to be able to eat. Look, some of you, you could try as hard as you want. You couldn't go eat worm soup. You just don't have the stomach for it. And God says, I, I need you to be a missionary around the world. And so I'm going to make it so you don't get grossed out very easy. And you can ask for monkey and dog and everything else and try it and, and not care. And, and, but is that because I'm so... No, it's because God said, I wired you to do that. It was a gift from God. I can adapt to a culture. I, I can handle hot or cold or sleeping in the jungle or whatever. I can handle, but that's something given from God. It's not because I'm better than somebody else who doesn't have the health to do that. They have been get other skills I don't have. They might be able to learn five languages. I, can't, I can barely get English. Okay? So understand, everything that I have and everything you have, every skill, all your brilliance, all your talent, all your strength, all your good looks, all those things you have, you can get haughty about it, but everything you got was given. And, 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 and the opportunities you have were a gift to you. You are just a good steward or not a good steward. But it's easy not to increase yourself. And John the Baptist says, you know what? This ministry is from God. This ministry is from God. Can, can I just tell you, this? when I've worked with people who are troubled and people from bad backgrounds and people who are addicts and people who have done crime and everything else, I look and, 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 and you might not think this is true unless you've really dealt with a lot of criminals and been in a lot of jail ministries. You'll find people in jail who are very nice people. And you will look at them and say, you know what? If you'd have grown up a different home, you'd have a great life. I understand. 
I understand it. I understand it's their choices. I get that. But look, you know, like I, I was visiting a guy in jail, 17 years old, shot a guy. But the guy he shot had just knocked out his brother and he's a meth addict. And the whole room is full of meth addicts. And the guy was coming to attack him. And he knew where a gun was in the house. He shot the guy. And, and he was being charged with assault. The guy didn't die, fortunately. Charged with assault one. Look, this is a felon out of prison on meth in his house, just knocked over his big brother. He's 17, he's coming after him, and he shot him. Should he have had the gun? No. Should he have shot him? I don't know. But you know what? That's a situation he was in. And you can criticize someone who does whatever, but you, you didn't grow up in that. It's hard to make choices in those situations. Instead of saying, what's wrong with those people? Say, what's wrong with those people? How can I help them? I had a better start than them. Let me go, let me go minister to them. Because when, she, when you realize you've been blessed, you don't get haughty. When I go to a, a, a very poor country, I don't say, I'm an American. Treat me right. No, it wasn't my fault. I was born in an American pastor in Seattle in a rich area. And I have more money than them. The pastor there is probably a better Christian than I. He walks three hours to church. I complain when I get stuck in traffic at a light. He may be a better guy than I. And when you realize that you've been given things, you're raised good, you're in a free country, you're in a prosperous country. You have good health. And a lot of things that you didn't choose. Now, some of you chose to come to America. And good job. Understand even that your country was together enough or you went to a country where they had the opportunity to come to America. Your paperwork got accepted. Your parents put enough ambition into you where you would leave your country. And understand everything, you take advantage of the opportunities you're given, but everybody's not given the same opportunity. So don't get haughty if you've done well. Stay humble and realize you've been blessed. And maybe you have a good intelligence and God made you brilliant. And you don't choose your IQ. You choose what to do with your IQ. And, and, and realize that it came from God. The desire, the strength, the ability, the oxygen you breathe. You are not making your heart beat or your lungs breathe. It's an involuntary muscular response. God put it in you for your heart to breathe, to heart, heart to breathe and your lungs to beat. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and don't get haughty if you're smarter than me. And, uh, but, uh, but God put it, God, God's making that happen. You didn't earn your oxygen. Stay humble. So if all of a sudden you get decreased, you say, I was blessed to have that good time then. And, and it's okay. You enjoy the blessing. You're content because you understand you have it good. And, and by the way, if you're hearing my voice and you live in this area, you have it good. Amen. You're in a rich, free nation. And you can complain about it and find the faults. And yes, there's faults in every nation. You don't know how good you have it if you think you have it bad here. Talk to some, some of our immigrants. They'll tell you how good you have it. <laughs> you have it really good and, and praise God and, and enjoy it and, and, and be a thankful person. Don't be one of these whiners about everything. Be thankful. How do you decrease? Number one, you must keep in mind that it all comes from God. Every good and perfect gift, even the skills we have, everything. Number two, we must remember who God is. Verse 31, we'll continue on with what John says. He that cometh from above is above all. And he that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. But he that cometh from heaven is above all. And what, uh, and what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And, and, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath said it uh, to his seal that God is true. You know, one of the things he talks about God is, he that cometh from above is above all. Wow, let's just remember who God is. He that is the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. And he that cometh from heaven is above all. He says, hey, look, I'm just a man down here. I'm earthly. Jesus, who's increasing right now, guys, don't get too upset about it. He's above all. He's king of kings and lord of lords. 
<clears throat> he's God in the flesh. His name is Emmanuel, and he is above all. And I remember who he is. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, God, God, remember who God is. When you remember who God is, you don't try to lift yourself up too high. That's the mistake the devil made. I shall exalt my throne above the most high. I will lift myself up above God. Hey, we're just sinners. We're just pieces of dirt held together and, and with a bunch of water in there. And, and, and we're just things that deteriorate and die. We're, we look at human history. Remember, humans aren't all that hot. Got less than 50 years of world peace and 6,000 years of history. It's a messed up world. And humans are, 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 all of us have our days. Even the best of us. We're all fallen creatures, but God is perfect. He's holy. He's beautiful. He's almighty. He never does anything wrong. He is altogether lovely one. He is everything. He's the all in all. He's the one who just spoke and the universe came. And he came and he loved us unconditionally in our sin, knowing every bad thing about us. He loved us anyway. He's worthy to be praised. And when you realize who he is, you don't lift yourself up so high. You don't worry about lifting him up. Uh, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. What a great God. I think about Colossians words, words it. Talking about Jesus. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, invisible and invisible, whether it be uh, thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or things created, uh, uh, all things are created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He is above all things, and he should have the preeminence in all things, and we shouldn't worry about lifting ourselves up. We should worry about lifting up Jesus. Amen? Lifting up God, making God look good. The church isn't about making the preacher and the big guy and, and making, and look, I'm just a sinner saved by grace just like you are. I'm imperfect. I'm just a man. If you're doing this all because of me, I'm going to tell you, you're doing it for the wrong reason and a dumb reason. You need to do what you do because of a great God who loved you in your sin, who gave his own son's life for you, who loves you, who has mercy, who knows everything you do wrong, who knows all your failures and says, I love you anyway, and I have mercy for you, and I'll forgive you, and I'll use you, and I'll make a plan for your life, and I'll work everything together for your good. I love you, and what a good God. Look, if I were God, I would not be patient with me. I would have given up me a long time ago. I would have fried me with a lightning bolt a thousand times. Amen? Amen? How many would have fried yourself multiple times? Okay, and, and I'm not saying even you're always bad. You're probably a good heart, and you probably and you do good things, and, and at least you can pick a good church. But, but, uh, but you, know, you, 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 you know, even in all that, we've all had times in our life we want to forget about. But, you know, God just says, I love you. And why would we want to lift him up? Remember how good a God he is. Remember who he is. And we need to just remember who God is. He's above all. That's what the first thing John said. He is the one who is above all. And John, John was not worried about exalting himself. He remembered, the more you turn your eyes upon Jesus we sung about, the more you don't look so hot. And worry about why does anybody understand me? Why does anybody thank me? Why does anybody realize how great I am? Why does anybody appreciate me? You know, you just you become kind of dim and you're and and not not that important anymore. When you begin to look at others and love people, you and you get your mind off yourself and look at the needs of others. See, in biblical Christianity, you're dying to yourself. Paul said, "I die daily." It's not about you. You look at the needs of others and 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 how you can help other people, and, and you're not so worried about yourself. <clears throat> when you look around and you see who's hurting, instead of saying, why is anybody thanking me? Why does anybody appreciate me? Why does anybody notice me? Why does anybody help me? You say, oh man, why does anybody help them? Hey, I got an opportunity. Let me be a blessing to them. Why have I been given this opportunity? How come I am strong enough or blessed enough that I can go do something for them? And you begin to forget about yourself. And you're protecting other people, and you're loving people, and you're lifting up God. And you just kind of remember, I have a great God, and I'm not that great. 
and he's being lifted up and he's been exalted and and you know this hard time i'm going through right now and this stuff i'm learning this is making me a better christian so if i have to be put down and learn some things and humbled in life and and maybe lose my strength for a while and maybe lose my ability or maybe lose my name for a little while and and i just become nothing and you know what but that makes me a better christian and god gets lifted up more and i'm able to tell how good god is and show off god's strength for a while that's okay because it's all about him because he deserves it. And everybody's not lifting him like he deserves. And the world's talking bad about him. And they don't know how amazing he is. I've got to lift up Jesus. It doesn't matter if anybody thinks I'm great or whatever. It's about him. He must increase, but I must decrease. How we decrease is first, we keep in mind that it all comes from him. Number two, remember who God is. And think that in the one, just in let there be light and universes were created. How big he is, omnipotent that he measured the universe with his span. He measured every galaxy and every, every solar system and all the universe between his, his pinky and his, and his thumb. And he's that big and that great and that mighty. And he looks at you and cares about you and loves you. And you can cast your burdens upon him because he cares for you. And he looks down at the earth when he knows the whole universe and created it all. And he numbers the hairs on your head and he loves you. And you say, what am I doing exalting myself? Who cares if somebody laughs at me? Who cares if somebody makes fun of me? It's all about Jesus. I was at a conference and and, and they were teaching and and and, and there was a, there was kind of an issue that people had been frustrated with with an issue and and uh, and you know people do this pendulum swing they get too wound up about something they kind of swing to the opposite extreme and and uh, and it'd be hard to explain but 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 in there the teacher was t- teaching and taught a bunch of stuff and there was good stuff and and but 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 they swung so far over here that they kind of they kind of forgot about this part it was a wise man so I I the question begged to be asked he says anybody have any questions and everybody's quiet and I raised my hand and I knew a whole bunch of people were affected by what they're talking about there and they're kind of sensitive to it but I thought I have to learn this and I'm not going to be I'm not going to be uh, uh they're going to think I, I didn't get it and they're going to think lowly of me. But I need to answer this question. I raised my hand. And I said, hey, I understand we got to do this thing for people. And we got to get this truth. And a lot of people miss this. And I get that. But once they get this truth, how do you get them to do this without them misunderstanding? And you know what happened? I got it from everybody. <laughs> and this person said, oh, let me, let me explain that to him. I already understood the truth. But there was something I had to get and I had to learn and I knew I was going to be humiliated because I was asking it, but I had to learn that truth. And so the person over here, he said, well, let me, let me explain that to him. And the other person over here said, let me explain it to him. And, and, and then uh, and, and the preacher said, well, you got to get this over here. I said, I, okay, but, but what about this? And, and, and then after the session, another guy came to me and said, I need to explain this to you. You don't understand this. And he sat there and explained what I didn't understand, which I did understand. But you know, when you learn to put yourself down and it's not about you and you, don't, you get rid of your pride, to gain this much wisdom, you'll take this much humility. I didn't have to defend myself. I didn't have to say, I already know that. I already know this. Hey, buddy, I know more about this than you do. Don't need to do that. Let them all, t- maybe one of them will give me the right answer that I'm looking for. I'm trying to figure out. Why? Because you push yourself down. You don't have to exalt yourself. And wisdom is so precious. It's far, the price is far above rubies and gold and silver. And for me to gain knowledge of how to help people better, though people, uh, though I have to go through a little humility to get there, that's no problem. Because once you used to pushing yourself down, you don't have to say, you know what, I know more than you. Even when you know more than them. Because decreasing is no big deal. Because it's not about me and what people think about me. It's about what they think of my God. And it's about how many people we can help. And somebody might come up today and say, Pastor, I need to tell you some things you need to do right. And they might have 10 things I'm doing wrong in their mind. And you know what? I can sit and listen to all of them. Because I'm searching so much to learn how to do things better for God that if they have one thing, none of them might be dumb, but if I, there's one thing I can learn, rebuke a wise man, he will love you. Rebuke a fool and he'll hate you. Because you've learned that it's all about God and his cause and his kingdom, and you learn to be humble. And I'm trying to always push myself down, and I don't always do it. Uh, I, I'm more humble than any of you. And, uh, and, 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 and you push yourself down constantly because we always are trying to be lifted up ourselves. But you know what? It's about him. 
and who he is and how worthy he is, it does not matter that much about exalting yourself because you remember who it's about and it's about the Lord. We must remember who God is, that in all things he might be had the preeminence. John said, hey, he is above all. What's the big deal? I'm, my ministry is going away. It doesn't matter. That's God. He's above everything. He created the universe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if my ministry is going down. Look what's happened in his ministry. God's ministry is doing well. And that's all that matters. Remember who, who it, it, it's about. Number three, we often have to push ourselves down. He must increase, but I must decrease. I'm going to take you to James here and talk to you a little bit about this and really, really hit this a lot. We must often push ourselves down. I'm going to just show you this in the Bible. And <clears throat> the word humble, because we're going to use the word humble here, is the word tapenos in the Greek. It means, to de- it means depressed. When you say depressed, we use that as a mental term about I'm in depression. Don't think of that because it messes you up. Depressed means push down. So depression means your emotions are pushed down. That's what it means. Depress. You depress a button. So when, when, when I'm saying uh, humble means depressed, it doesn't mean you are dep- a press, depressed person. It's the way the language has changed. It means pushed down. Okay? Humility means something is pushed down. Because why? We're always lifting ourselves up. James 4 and 6, 7, 10, these verses teach us this. It says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he, he saith, God resisteth the, resist the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 10, humble yourselves, therefore. Uh, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. You push yourself down. The Verse 10, the word humble means to bring low. Humble yourselves. We naturally lift ourselves up. Notice it says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. There's two ways to learn humility. One, you humble yourself. You know what? This person's criticizing me. I'm not going to argue back. I'm just going to, you know, it doesn't matter what they think. And you know what? Okay. You're, you're, you're smarter than me. I just push myself down. There's two ways to become humble. One, you humble yourself. You say, you know what? Everything I have is from God. I'm blessed. I'm not better than that person because I'm smarter than them. Yes, I'm smarter than them, but you know what? That's a gift from God. Man, I had good parents. Mom and Dad, thank you so much for what you did for me. That's, that's pushing yourself down. Or God humbles you. Can I tell you, if you have a choice, humbling yourself is much easier. Amen. Humbling yourself is saying, you know what? I am only a faster runner because I was born with these abilities, and I worked on them, and I'm faster than all the rest of these people. And that's humbling yourself. So you remember who you are, remember the opportunities, and be thankful. That kid there is never going to be faster than me. He, he doesn't have the DNA. God humbling you is you're running and you fall flat on your face in front of them. And they pass you, the slow person, while you're ho- holding your bloody nose. <laughs> See, it's much better if you humble yourself than let God humble you. And, and either way, everybody gets humbled. Okay, but it's better to humble yourselves and just keep, just stay humble. You push yourself down. That's the we often have to do that. Humble yourselves because we naturally lift ourselves up. It says here in James and just the next book, First Peter five, right there. It's going to say the same thing. Humble yourselves. First Peter five and verse five. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another, um, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves. Can I tell you, the amazing thing about it is, and and I almost want to put this in here because it's almost saying the opposite, but one of the things is when you humble yourself, and please get this, when God humbles you, you just get humbled. And that's good. Humility is good. When you humble yourself, God says, all right, you did that. I'm impressed. I'm going to lift you up. They, they that humble themselves shall, shall be exalted. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Those that humble themselves, God will exalt in due time. God says over and over, you humble yourself, I will lift you back up. I like that. You know what? You can handle success now. You've humbled yourself. And understand, when you humble yourself, God can bless you mightily because you're not going to get proud about it. When God has to humble you, he usually has to humble you a whole bunch of times. 
Because you didn't, listen, you did not learn the lesson to humble yourself and just deal with reality. You had to be humbled, so you didn't learn the lesson, you just brought somewhere. There's some people who get arrested and say, oh no, what did I do? I'm going to change this. Other people say, man, I wouldn't have caught me if my friend wouldn't have been so stupid. They never got fixed what got them arrested. You understand the difference? And so when God humbles you, you may not have learned a lesson, and God might have to humble you again or keep you humble because you never learned a lesson. When you humble yourself, God says, okay, I can trust you with success, so I'm going to lift you up now because you know how to humble yourself. You know how to push yourself down. You know how to not think you're so much better than everybody else. You know where your success came from. You know how to give me glory. You know how to not think you're better than other people. And you know how to help other people. Because when you get proud, understand this, a proud person who is above other people, and we are, people are above other people. Understand that. I'm not saying that. Pastor, you're not saying, are you saying the person who's going out and helping people and, and, and working a job and being a blessing to his family and a great family member and, and is great in society and helps people and feeds people and all this stuff, he's better than a drug addict who's breaking the car? Yes, he is better. He's doing better things. But when he becomes proud, he looks down on him and says, what's wrong with you, you pathetic thing? When he remembers, but for the grace of God, I could be that guy. He will help that guy. He will help that guy. Proud people don't help people because they cannot believe someone's like that. Until God humble, humbles them and they say, I didn't know it was like this down here. I would never have looked at people like that. I would have been helping people if I'd have known. Yeah. God had to bring you there so you could get some compassion and realize you are blessed. And when you are proud, you cannot, you look down on people. You may be better than them. You may have been diligent and hard and clean and done all the things you should do, and they may have done a bunch of bad things. But when you're proud, all you do is look down on people. Humble people say, but for the grace of God, I would be there. But for the grace of God, I would be there. And so God exalts those who, because it's so hard to push ourselves down and say, you know what? I'm no better than them. You know, God, you've been so good to me. Thank you for letting me notice their faults. Lord, help me to help them. Give me wisdom. I don't know how to help them. And you become humble and God says, I'm going to lift you up because you can handle success and blessing and good things. And so God can use you. Humble yourselves. And in the end, if you humble yourself, you end up really blessed. Uh, to show you that, well, I'll show you it, 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 uh, toward the end there, but it's an amazing thing. John the Baptist, when he decreased, Jesus exalted him. But a few things. So, to finish out the message, I'm going to tell you how to decrease self while increasing another. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to decrease yourself while increasing another. Let's give you the steps here. They're quick. Number one, submit to others. First Peter 5, we're already there. Likewise, <clears throat> ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace unto the humble. Ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, it's assumed, yea, all of you be subject one to the other, and be clothed with humility. So, I am, because of an office, uh, I am an authority, and I'm the guy in front of everybody standing up here, and I'm on a stage, not because I want to be elevated, because you can't see in the back if I'm not on a stage. And, uh, and so, so here's the situation I am in here. So you say, okay, you're the leader. You, everybody needs to uh, uh, follow you, and you are, no, no, you got it all wrong. The position God's put me in as a pastor is a servant position. My job is to serve you by going to God and finding what God has for you, studying the scriptures and coming to you and say, let me help you. I have what God has for you this week. That is serving you just like someone serves you a meal. Whenever leadership doesn't realize that everything is about serving, leadership becomes bad and becomes dictatorial. A dad Yes, he's the authority of the family, but he's that authority because I know how. If you will do what I say, son, I can make give you a great life and, and teach you how to have a wonderful life. 
He's not, all right, good, I'm going to tell that kid what to do. That's not why he wants to be in charge. He wants to be in charge because he knows better than the kid. And he wants his kid to turn out right. And he wants to lead his kid somewhere. He's serving his children. And understand that it says be subject one to another. Be willing to be put underneath somebody else. If, I, if the toilet's in scrub today and nobody else can do it or the only person who can do it has got a, a health issues, I'll do it. Because I don't want them to hurt themselves. And that's the way I'd serve. And if I need the vacuum, it's uh, you're not above anything. It, it, be willing to submit to anybody. If you say, Pastor, hey, you know what? I need you to go out and, and, and help me jump start my car because you know how to do that stuff. It, you know what? I get to be of service to you. Well, I'm not going to let them tell me what to do. If you're a servant, you can let people tell you what to do because you submit to people. Now, there's a time when it's bad. And, you, and it's bad. It's a bad way to... Oh, we're following this. It's a bad way to serve them to let them tell you what to do. So if my kids start bossing me around, that's bad for them. They're going to turn out to be brats. And they're messed up in life because they don't know how to follow orders because they think they can scream and yell and get what they want. They're spoiled. I am not serving them well, letting them boss me around. Do you understand that? I'm willing to submit. I'm strong enough to submit to anybody. Right? That's what I, need. I need to be strong enough that if anybody walks up and says, hey, uh, uh, you need to do this. I'm humble enough to be willing to submit to anybody because I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace. But it doesn't always serve everybody well. The policeman can't submit to the criminal or society falls apart. It's not good for society. Not good for the criminal. And so learn to submit to people and learn to be underneath. Yeah, just because you're a boss in one realm doesn't mean you're a boss in another realm. If you're not strong enough to obey your boss and, and, and uh Go home and tell your kids what to do. You're all messed up. You need to be able to do when the when 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 the fireman says get out of your house. There's a gas leak. You say hey, don't tell me what to do. It's my house. No, you're strong enough to be somebody to tell you what to do. You say no, I'm so strong. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. No, you're insecure. You're insecure and not strong enough to submit. A Navy SEAL is really strong and says yes sir to a sergeant. Give me the military stuff. <laughs> Submit to me. And so they, they are part of the Navy, aren't they? I forgot. I always thought they were tough. And, uh, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, you know, you, you understand strong people can learn to submit when they need to. can say, yes, sir. A tough, smart, competent guy can go to work, and all of a sudden the boss comes in and says, hey, we're changing things today. He says, okay. He's strong enough to do that. Weak people can't change gears. They're not strong enough to submit. They're too stubborn and out of control. Strong people control themselves. And when it's time to lead, they can lead. When it's time to follow, they can follow. Learn to be submissive when it needs to be submissive. My, woman, my, my, my wife is incredibly smart. She offers to Ivy League schools. She's incredibly competent, incredible organizer, smarter than I am, has all... I don't know you, man, man. And, uh, and, and, and just br- and, and, and unbelievably competent. And, and, and when, when she was looking at, when, when she was looking at men, all kinds of great, strong guys in the youth group, she was so strong, the pastor says, you cannot date any of them. You will dominate all of them. She's just so strong. And, and, and that's my wife. But she's strong enough that I say, honey, God's calling us to go to the Philippines, and, and we got to take the whole family. The whole family's got to meet you. She's a homebody. She doesn't like, she, she likes staying at home. She says, yes, sir. Okay. She's strong enough to do that. Rebellion's easy. Weak, weak, foolish people can rebel. Okay? It takes strength to submit when you're strong. Number two, let God exalt you. We said that he'll exalt you in due time. John the Baptist, it says, and I'm going to read this, Luke uh, chapter 7. I'm gonna, man, i got to hurry. I'm out of time. I'm going to submit to the clock at some point. And uh, Luke 7 and verse 28, But I say unto you, uh, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He says, hey, look, there's nobody greater than John the Baptist. He humbled himself. He says, man, that guy, that guy let, will let go of his whole ministry and let me be exalted. There's nobody greater than that. And Jesus exalted him because God will exalt you and do to him. Let God be the one who exalts you. Great verse. 
Proverbs 27 verse 2 says this, Let another man's lips praise thee and not thine own. Do not be the person who praises you. Let other people speak the good things about you. And don't fish for it. Hey, do you notice how beautiful I am? Okay, that's not another man's lips praising thee. Hey, you notice I've been working out? No, no. If you're a, you know, look, I don't have to do that. People just say that about me, about me working out. And, uh, and but, but let another man's lips praise you and not your own, okay? Let God exalt you. Let others exalt you. Let others say, you have been a blessing to everybody here at work. You know, you, you have been, you, you heard about somebody being sad. You wrote him a card. John forgot his lunch. You bought him lunch. Man, old, this guy here, man, he is a, what a great guy. Let that happen. That's fine. Let God exalt you and lift you up and put you in a position where you're blessed. But don't lift yourself up. You don't ever notice. Did you not notice I bought you lunch three times this week? You only bought it twice. And, and, and be a, be a, let God exalt you. Let God bring the praise like John the Baptist did. Number three, be a servant to everyone. Matthew 23, I got to finish. Matthew 23, be a servant to everyone. When I walked out and there was a, a guy sitting out there on the steps on Thursday, Friday, on the steps, drug addict, sitting out there, sleeping for a long, long, long time, maybe three hours he didn't move, and so I just want to check on him. Went out there and just said, hey, you all right? Checked on him. He says, man, I'm okay. I say, we're from the church here. I'm the pastor. Let me just talk to you for a couple minutes. He says, you know, I'm just so thirsty. All right, let me get you some water. Let me get you some water. Got him some water. Talked to him. Started witnessing to him. Said he'd be here today. Was not here, but we invited him. Be a friend to him. I'm not above serving the heroin addict. Jesus serve me by dying on the cross. If he can serve me, I can serve anybody. Amen. I'm not too good to serve anybody. And, and, and be a servant to everyone. Matthew 23, what does Jesus say about this? Verse 10, Neither be called masters, for there is one master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that, humbleth him, he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. The greatest among you is servant of all. Uh, uh, um, and just a couple of quick things here. I'm, I'm not going to even give the references until I'm, I've read them because I don't want you to turn to them. I'm going to hurry. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. That was a lowly servant job. Your servants washed your guests' feet. Jesus said, let me teach you how to serve. I'm going to wash your guys' feet. And I'm the son of God. Be willing to serve anyone. And just say, you know what? What needs done? You know what? Let me help carry that for you. It's not my job. Just, just be a servant. It pushes you down. It's hard to do. The person who drives you crazy, you should find a way to serve them. You will find yourself being brought very low so God can exalt you later. Serve them. Your neighbor who plays too loud of music, when all of a sudden you look outside and his car is not starting and you say, good. And you close your curtain. Ha, ha, ha. Then you say, No. I'm going to go out and jump and start his car, even though he yells at me all the time and I tell him to turn down his music. I'm going to serve him. And you'll show him what Jesus is like. Amen. That went over great. And, uh, and, and, and we learn to serve anybody. Everyone's shortcomings are your opportunities to be a servant. People's shortcomings are... I'm not saying you, you can get ripped off. I'm not saying, you know, lend him your car when they got six DUIs and no drivers. I'm not saying be foolish. I'm just saying be a servant. First Thessalonians in chapter 4, let me just read this in, 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 in chapter 5, verse 14. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, when uh, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. I just think how it says comfort the feeble-minded. Somebody's mind is not there. Go comfort them. Put your arm around them. Say it's okay. Comfort the feeble-minded. Somebody doesn't have all you have. Somebody doesn't have it together. Comfort them. Support the weak. Put yourself below. Be the servant of all. It pushes you down. 
Everyone's shortcomings are your opportunities to serve them because you have a skill they don't have, a wisdom they don't have, a knowledge they don't have, and so go serve them with the blessings God's given you. That poor person uh, is working hard and they just can't meet their rent. Let's go ahead and I can your rent. I have some extra money. Let me serve them with some extra money and go pay the rest of the rent. And let me not even put them, just go, I'll just go down to the apartment manager. I'll just pay it. They won't even know I did it. And I'll just be anonymous. Why? I'm just serving. God will exalt me in due time. And, and just be a servant. He must increase, but I must decrease. It's about being servants and not pushing yourself up. Being a servant and not being proud. Humbling yourself so God can lift you up. And God lifted John the Baptist up. Even getting to heaven is by being humble. Jesus said, you want to get to heaven? You got to become like a, humble yourself like a little child. Lord, I cannot save myself. I can't do it. I'm not worthy of heaven. That's hard to do, but that's how you get to heaven. When you realize you're a sinner and Jesus is a Savior and you depend upon Him and your humility and get rid of your pride, I'm going to get to heaven because I'm a good person. You get rid of that pride and push yourself down and say, no, I can't save myself. I am a sinner. All of sin and comes short of the glory of God. Jesus died for my sins, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. I need Him to save me. That's humility. You quit saying, oh, no, I'm good enough. No, you need to become like a child and be humble. I need you. Help me. Lift me up. I can't get to heaven without you. And strong, competent people do that all the time because they're strong enough to submit when they need to. And they're strong enough to serve. They're strong enough to do what they need to do because it's not about them. We're pushing ourselves down so Jesus can be exalted and so people can be helped. And if you want Jesus as your Savior today, you got to humble yourself and realize you're a sinner. And you're not going to heaven with your sin. But Jesus died for those sins. You need to trust him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to preach the word of God today. I pray that we would be willing to decrease while you increase. Just that phrase over and over, he must increase, I must decrease. He must increase, I must decrease. Lord, that's just so important. May we be able to do that and be strong enough. May we be servants. May we get rid of our pride. I struggle with this, Lord. It's just It's a human condition. And I pray that we would be able to serve. And I pray to be able to be exalting you and not ourselves. I pray to be able to realize that we're just tools. We're just tools for your cause. And we lift you up and make you look good. And Lord, help us be willing to decrease. And we need to, when it's time to decrease, may we be willing to be humbled. May we be willing to go say, I'm sorry when it decreases us, but when it's the truth. Lord, help us to be people who can decrease and strong enough to do so in Jesus' name.